In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the exalted and living Christ, now at the right hand of the Savior as Mahdi. And I bear witness that the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the Messiah in this day of judgment in which we now live. And in their names, I greet my family with the greeting words of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. All right. I'm going to begin by asking Sister Anya to restate her original question or expectation because this this uh today's Zoom meeting is based on uh an idea that Sister Anya brought to the table on Sunday. So Sister Anya, if you could if you could restate uh what you said on Sunday, if you can, if you can remember how you re how you stated the concept. Um, on Sunday or was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? No, couldn't have been yesterday. No, oh, it was our, yeah, it was, it was our discussion yesterday. Yes, sir. Wow. Time flies. Okay, um, this evolved us first first of all assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam dear yeah. believers <laughs> um this stemmed out of a conversation that sister denise and i had okay. yesterday um the question on the table was about um the engram and what what defined the engram um having um, involving pain and unconsciousness and so we wanted to get a deeper definition um, we went over some of the um, uh, definitions that it gives in the t technical di dictionary I believe there's about 14 15 or 16 definitions in there okay so we went through a few of those um and it was basically that as if you know there has to be physical pain but it said that there has to be also involve unconsciousness and so we wanted a clearer um, definition or, or explanation of what um constituted or what what would um to clarify the state of unconsciousness involved in that um uh, of course you know if you're if you somebody slaps you punches you and you're knocked out and you're unconscious we we understand that as a state of unconsciousness or if you're under anesthesia um, as we as was discussed on sunday that that came up quite a bit but um, what are the other instances of unconsciousness? Um, okay. That that was the main crux of it. it. Sister Denise, do you have anything else to add to that? I know you wasn't in the conversation um, yesterday um, with that I had with Brother Lukman, but um, just based on the conversation that we had, and the concerns that you had. Do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I was, I was wondering if it, if it has to be uh, unconsciousness along with pain, you know, that the, is the unconsciousness makes it an engram. So it has to be pain and unconsciousness or could pain, could, could just pain um be be part of it because it's what has what is being done to me but um i'm i'm aware of what is being done to me so the only engram can come i'm asking is when when you are in pain but you unconscious as well and in consciousness so it's like it has to be two two of them joined together and not separate. 
Okay. And I guess also too, if um, is it is it the experience of pain? Does that automatically come with a state of unconsciousness, even if it's only for a split second? Um, and what are what other types of experiences would would um would um. Uh, qualify, I guess it would be a good word, would qualify as being a state of unconsciousness. Okay. Now, how did we connect this to um, planting seeds? How do, we, how do we make that connection? We made that connection because when I asked you the question yesterday, you used planting seeds as a demo kit to okay. explain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So based on our conversation yesterday and what we have today, I hope that this answers all of your questions uh, and produces some new questions. But just to, just to deal with the, the, uh, the first question, pain by itself will produce the unconsciousness even if the, even if the pain is just instantaneous. Okay, so you don't really get pain by itself without the consciousness, but if you get a slight pain and there's no consciousness involved, I mean, that's not, the pain has to be great enough to to switch from the, the, the analytical mind to the reactive mind. Does that make sense? Okay, so as soon as you make that switch, once you hit that reactive mind state, Whatever is recorded is held there. And then when the mind switches back to the analytical mind, that recording remains. But the pain severe enough will produce the states of unconsciousness. Okay. So that's your that's the engram. The secondary, the secondary engram is where the emotional uh information takes place. So, so does that does that answer the basic question? Of it being a, an an ingram, right? Pain and unconsciousness are 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 the two elements. But the pain, the pain will okay. induce the unconsciousness. Okay, so so you're not, um, you're not, uh, you know, unconsciousness. To me, I'm looking at it as the person is unaware, like you, like, like you don't, you don't know what's going on. But what if you, you know, a certain area has been uh, with anesthesia numb and the other where you, you can feel it. Is that still um, uh, consciousness or uh, unconsciousness? You say, no, when you, when, no, when you're under anesthesia, you're not going to be aware. Uh, well, you know, they can, they can, uh, deaden one part of your body and the other part is, is awake. Can, what would that be? Well, you're, you're, you're not unconscious then. Oh, I'm not. You just, you just have one part. It's like when they get, but put Novocaine in your mouth, that part of your mouth has been, you know, anesthetized, but you're still aware. Your, your analytical mind is still there. Oh, okay. OK, now, outside of anesthesia and unconsciousness, you could also add to that uh, uh, when we've been under the influence. And I think all of us may have been there, whether it been drugs or alcohol, but to a certain extent, depending on how much we smoke, popped or drink or drink, uh, there was a, we, we hit a level of that unconsciousness. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so that that involved that's that's part of that process as well. Go ahead, Sister Shayla. You're on mute. I understand what the sisters are saying. Okay. But anytime there is any type of pain, there's a shut off. Mm -hmm. There is a shut off. Either we we're not conscious that there is but there is a shot mm -hmm. and i think that's part of the 
conscious, that's the part. For example, um, we're not conscious like in an accident, for example. Mm -hmm. um, or, or let's say we bump, her, we bump into the wall and we bump her knee and the cleaning lady is cleaning, the vacuum is going, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is going on. We're not conscious to none of that. We're just conscious that we hurt her, her knee. But the, the recorder is recording all of that. Yes. But we are not conscious. So mm -hmm. it's a shock because we're just conscious to the pain, but mm -hmm. everything being recorded. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I don't know if that helps to understand mm -hmm. that shut off. Because the, the body protects itself. For example, in really bad accidents, you see this a lot when people fall into ditches and I don't know how many feet. And they're there for hours, sometimes days, and they have a lot of broken parts on their body and a lot of damage. But they are not in pain until they hear a voice coming to them. Then everything comes to the front. Mm -hmm. But they wasn't conscious that there was that. They know they was hurt, but they didn't know to what degree because there was a shut up. Mm -hmm. But they were still awake. Mm -hmm. They were still conscious, mm -hmm. but they would shut up. And the minute they hear the help, then they start to feel. The body start to stop producing whatever it makes mm -hmm. us do that. Mm -hmm. You find this with accident victims a lot that's been left for a long time. The pain starts when they hear somebody come, come in to rescue them. Mm -hmm. And they are conscious, but there's a shut off. Definitely mm -hmm. has to be a shut off. Mm -hmm. And it's recording at the same time. The mind is recording. Because mm -hmm. we understand good. shut off as being totally unconscious. I walk totally unconscious of a lot of things that are in my face. And I'm totally not conscious to it. I know I am. Mm -hmm. So the shut off still there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that, that kind of... In, in everyone's home, you have... Uh what's called a breaker panel, correct? Where you can flip switches and turn lights off in your house? Yes. Why do you think that is in place? Oh, yes. uh, so there's no overload. So when there is an overload that will burn the whole circuit out, there is some, that's a mechanism to alert you like, okay, uh, we have to shut down now because everything can, can be damaged if we don't. They can okay. be more done that's why i understand electricity so that's that's a per, that's a perfect that's a perfect uh explanation that same concept is in our body and that's why there has to be a a, a switch flipped because if we were a con if we were a, if we were remain conscious of all the pain that we've ever gone through we won't be here right now so the body has a mechanism to protect us from some of the stuff we went through because it was too much trauma for us to bear and it buries it away. And unfortunately, uh, all that stuff is still with us. So in a house, if you plug in, if you if you plug in the hair dryer in the same place where you have the, the microwave, it's gonna trip the it's gonna trip the circuit. Because if you let those two things remain in the same outlet and there's nothing there to trip the circuit, that wire is going to increase in heat to the extent that it's going to start a fire behind the wall. Okay. A fire behind the wall uh, in Dianetic language is called aberration. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, Sister Denise, are we? Uh, do you have any other questions about that? Do you, do you understand that concept about the engram? Um, yes, sir. That is the recording. And I guess it, someone will come and uh, what is that? Key you in or stimulate you? Or, mm -hmm. or, the stimulation or, or, the, or the key in. Yeah. And then it'll it'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. you, know? Uh, you know, because I've, I, I got a chance to analyze what we talked about uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And and it was it brought back to my memory why <clears throat> why I made some of the decisions in my life after that traumatic experience. Mm 
Okay. That, that I made and and uh, maybe I, I I wouldn't have, but th these were the reasons of you know childbirth and and you know do I have to go through this every time I go and have a <laughs> you know it's like who who wants that you know and people mm -hmm. make mistakes on it. yes sir so it was like it led into other things that. I said, oh, okay, that's why I made that decision, you know, and things like that. So yes, sir. Okay. It it helped me and I do I do understand, you okay. know. Yes, sir. All right, good. Praise be thank to Allah. You. So here's what here's where we go today. And you have Sister Anya to thank for this one. We're gonna attack that same concept, but we're gonna look at it from the perspective of the Bible. And we're going to look at uh, a parable that's found in the Bible. And we're going to parse through this parable uh, on the surface. We're not going to go deep into it and show how this parable can actually teach us about the tech of Dianetics. Because contained in this parable, there are principles that are equivalent to the concepts found in Dianetics. And then we're going to do the same thing from the perspective of the Holy Quran. And then at the end uh, of, of the information, there's going to be an assignment that's going to be given that we'll, we, will, we will cover this topic again, Allah willing, on Sunday. Okay, so we're going to hit the Bible, hit the Holy Quran. We're going we're gonna to do some self-application. And then Sunday, we're going to take the discussion uh, a little bit further. So let us begin. Uh, where's my share screen? <clears throat> share screen. Uh, wait a minute. And then here's that. Okay. So let me skip this out the way. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Don't look mine. Yes. Is your screen to the side? I mean, it looks like it's sliding up. Is that is that my screen or yours? I think that's your mine is right dead center of my screen. No, I mean YouTube is going to the side. Yeah, it's um Oh, you seeing my YouTube? Yeah, I don't okay. okay, let me get let me let me remove that out the way. Let me get this. My YouTube is not on my screen. Oh, okay. There it is. Okay, no, I, I don't want you to see the YouTube yet. Can you see the the PowerPoint now? Uh, yes, sir. I can. Okay. Do you see it full screen now? Uh, yes, sir. It's not okay. You let this slide. So as I as I as I saw on, uh, Sister Ania's idea, these are some of the ideas that that came to mind. So based on because Surah 96 says, Allah teaches man by the pen what man knew not. So this is how it comes to me, to use the planting of seeds as a demo kit to illustrate juggle, to, illust to be used as a demo kit to illustrate an engram and all of the elements or components that make up an engram. So so when we complete the concept today, we should have a very in-depth understanding of exactly what is an engram and it's an, its effect on us, okay? So today's topic is sowing tares among the wheat, using the earth as a demo kit for the reactive mind. <clears throat> Sister Sharon, assalamu alaikum. I saw you come in. Well, alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Happy Savior's Day. Happy Savior's Day to you. Alaikum salam. Okay, so sowing tares among the wheat. This is this is the first thing that came to mind as I, I began to study uh, to kind of put things together here. Part one today, we're going to look at the book of Matthew, chapter 13. And we're going to look at verses 24 through 30. And we're going to make a comparison 
between this parable in the Bible and the components of the reactive mind. And then we're going to look at a concept called we, we will all be afflicted. Okay. We will all be afflicted. This is a fire that all of us are going to have to go through. Okay. Part two, we're going to do the same concept. If everyone could go on mute, because I hear someone in the background, I hear someone's background info. Okay. Part two, same concept, except we're going to explore the Holy Quran and how a parable found in the Holy Quran can also be used to give us an understanding of the reactive mind. Then we're going to use the earth as a demo kit to give us some mass to look at, to understand and summarize everything. Okay. Specifically in the Holy Quran, there's something called the tree of Zakum. And we all, we all remember reading about that in the Holy Quran? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I had a question about Luke Mark. Go ahead, Brother Timothy. Are, are we supposed to be seeing uh, a different screen? Because I see YouTube. Okay. Who who here sees the PowerPoint? No, sir. We're, I'm seeing YouTube. Oh, well, how is, let me go back. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Now, does everyone see the PowerPoint? Not yet. No, no sir. sir. No, sir. Why is my PowerPoint not coming? The YouTube is not out of the way. Are you doing germination C? Is that no, no, I'm not. Actually, on my screen, I have my your PowerPoint. Okay, let me do this. I don't know how to fix this. How about now? No, uh, we still uh, see YouTube termination. See time lapse. I don't understand how you see that. Well, that's that's okay. Let me let me finagle here. I don't have, I don't even have the PowerPoint on my. Okay, let me try one more thing. Let's try one more thing. Let me. How about now? Okay. So oh, sir. Got it. Yep. You got the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, who is iPhone me? Yes, iPhone me. I don't know. Is my name coming up? No, ma'am. We see you, Sister Tina. I have iPhone me that's on. If you could just let us know who you are. Because if not, we're going to put you on. Yeah, basically. Yes. <laughs> iPhone me. If you're not able to talk, iPhone me, could you put your name in the chat? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, iPhone me going once. I hate to do this, but. iPhone me going twice. I think that's me, brother Luke Mine. All right, could you... <laughs> <laughs> it normally comes up with my name and I don't know why it's not doing that. <laughs> I was about to do it. 
Okay. That's All right. But that was a little commercial. That was a little commercial. That's not Sister Anya, Brother Luke Mon. I no, I see Sister, Sister Anya. Anya. It it is me. Um, because I um I have it on my iPhone as well. It's on the laptop. Oh. oh so you have you have two slots here. Okay. Yes. All right. I was about to hit the button. About to remove someone from the from the meeting. <laughs> you act, you act like me now, Sister <laughs> Okay. All right. So let me get this. Okay. Now I can see everyone's comments. I'm, I'm working on two computers. Okay. So here's what I, here's all the information that I had just said. Everyone sees that. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's what we're working with today. So the first thing is we're going to look at a parable from the Bible. And we're going to make this parable applicable to Dianetic Tech. So those of us that may have family members that are Christian, they don't want Islam, nor do they want Dianetic. We can kind of give them the same information, but give it to them through the language of the Bible. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. I still hear some feedback. If, I, if everyone could just go on mute, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm getting some real bad feedback. Now, <clears throat> book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24 says, another parable put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay lest while we gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, that's the parable. Now there's going to be a little bit of class participation in this next part. So when we say another parable put he forth unto them, saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. When we look at this verse, think mathematically, look at the main concepts that are in the verse and treat them as you would treat of like variables in an equation. So if we say the kingdom of heaven, what would be equivalent to the kingdom of heaven from the perspective of Dianetics. Yeah. A clear mind. A clear mind. Okay, anyone else? And an aberrated mind. <laughs> well, no, we don't want we don't want that heaven. Not yet. Well, we want that heaven. Oh, you talking about heaven. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about heaven. I was I'm thinking that, okay. that was heaven before we came into teachings. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. that would be an analytical mind. We could say clear. We could say analytical mind. Say How would we represent that on the tone scale? Tone 40, a state of bliss. Okay. We could say tone 40, or we could say anything really above 4.0 4 and above, but tone 40 is the goal. Okay. Anything where we're dealing with enthusiasm, happiness, but, but pure bliss is the goal. Because Allah says in the Holy Quran, uh, and make thy Lord thy exclusive object. So that tone 40 is when we're at perfect peace or perfect harmony with Allah, correct? Correct. Okay, so all the answers are correct. So the kingdom of heaven here, coming from the Bible, if we look at that from the perspective of Dianetics, we could say all those high tones with the goal being tone 40 is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. 
What is the field here? What could the field be? The mind. Mind. The, field, the mind. The field could be the mind. Okay. And what would be the good seed? Positive thoughts, good thoughts, high home. Okay. Anyone else? I don't Postulates. Guess, sir. Postulates. What else? The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, so the good seed represents anything that increases the effectiveness of the analytical mind, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And the field itself is the mind. We could say from this pers the perspective of this parable in the Bible, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So when, we, so when we interpret this verse, can we say we can see Dianetic tech in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, we're using what's called the law of substitution. Okay. Does anyone not understand what the law of substitution is? Okay. Then everyone, uh, then I'll leave it at that one. So when I was going through this, here's the two things I looked at. I said the kingdom of heaven represents the upper gradients of the tone scale, which we all discussed. <clears throat> Sowing good seed in this field represents the analytical mind. So everyone's answers are correct. So now based, based on this verse, let's look and see what the other verses say. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. <clears throat> From the perspective of Dianetics, what compares to the statement while men slept? Unconsciousness. Unconsciousness. So while, while this brother's unconscious, dianetically, who is the enemy? What's the enemy called? The reactive uh, mind. Right. Let's look outwardly first. Let's look outwardly first. Uh, those who are speaking while someone is unconscious. There you go. And what's another term that's used to describe individuals that do this purposely? Suppressive. Say, say what? Suppressive. suppressive persons. The suppressive persons which become the valences. So yes, both of those are correct. Okay. His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. So the tear, if you're sowing tares into the earth, what is that dianetically? Say that again, Brother Lukman. If you're Conjunct sowing system. tares, that means you're putting something into something. Planting suggestions tares. into the mind. Um, putting suggestions into the mind. Or if, if you're looking at it um, horticulturally, that would be the grafting process, grafting suggestions into the mind. Yes. yes, this is that Dianetic that's called putting in what? The circuits? No. Yes, circuits. The circuits. And they're also called implants, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is that called from the perspective of the Supreme Wisdom? Think Patmos, Island of Patmos. What did the nurse do? Oh, the needle in the brain, correct? Yeah. So here we have Bible, sowing tears, Dianetics, we call them circuits or implants. From the perspective of the Supreme Wisdom, we say we're sticking a needle in the brain, correct? Or grafting. Okay. okay. Then what is devil? Lesson number two says, a grafted man, which is made what? Weak, Weak. and wicked. Mm -hmm. Right. What happens to an individual when you implant a circuit into their mind? They become what? Weak and wicked. Weak and wicked. Okay. Do we see the relationship between the supreme wisdom and the tact of Dianetics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So while men slept could represent the moments of unconsciousness caused by injury or anesthetics, or we could say, uh, unconsciousness induced by uh, drugs or alcohol, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. The met enemy in Dianetics is called the suppressive person. 
what is the enemy called based on the lessons? Devil. Devil. What else is used to describe this type of person? Mischief maker. Mischief maker is, is correct. What other what other title is used for this type of person? And I'll give you a clue. Lost found Muslim lesson number two. Question number. Da, 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 I want to say. Is it Satan? Satan. But what else? Think percentages. Oh, the ten percent. The ten percent. The slave makers of the poor who teach the poor lies that the all wise, true, and living God is a spook and cannot be seen by the physical eye. That's the suppressive person. That's the equivalent. The 10% in our teachings is the SP or the suppressive person in Dianetics. So what would the PTS be? The potential trouble source. What, what would that be with regards to our lessons? The 85? The 85%. 85. Oh, the 85%? Yeah, the 85%. Remember... Remember, think think back, uh, think back on the Matrix. Remember when Neo and Morpheus were talking, and he said he turned around and uh, the, uh, uh, Agent Smith was sitting there with the gun. He said, "Freeze!" He said, "You were distracted by the woman in the red dress." He says, "Everyone in here, basically, I'm paraphrasing it. If you're not part of us, you're part of the system, right?" Right. right. Okay, so the suppressive person of Dianetics is the 10%. <clears throat> the PTS, we could say, is the 85%. When you watch, again, I always refer to these movies, but when you look at the movies, uh, the Blade movies, the vampires represent what? The 10%, correct? Yes. The bloodsuckers of the poor, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But vampires, didn't they have individuals that were human that worked for them called familiars? For those that yes. watch the movies? Yes, sir. Those familiars are, would be called what? Those are part of the 85%. I'm just giving us so, some math to, 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 to go with what we're looking at. So what, does, the, what huh? does PTS mean? PTS means potential trouble source. Oh. If you took, if you took what's called life's up, I think it's called life's ups, ups and downs, then you'll, you'll understand this a little bit. It's, 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 it's a specific course you could take in Dianetics. It's actually pretty good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> give you some more mass. What is the SP and the potential trouble source if you look at it from the perspective of the uh, Holy Quran? There's a, a surah called Abu Lahab. Uh -huh. The flame. Flame. Abu Lahab had a wife. Abu Lahab gave the prophet a lot of trouble. It says, and his wife, the bearer of slander. So his wife was the one that assisted him in causing the trouble. So there again, you have a suppressive person and you have a PTS. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we see all the connections? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Brother yes, Scott, sir. Brother Scott, you with us? I thought I saw Brother Scott come on. Or maybe he came on and went off. Okay. So the tear is the implant or the circuit. It also could be errors. So someone can come when we're not conscious and feed us information that's incorrect, right? Yes, sir. And then that's one of the reasons why we should not be involved in slander. Because yes. nine times out of 10, the information that's passed on is incorrect. And the, the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says that the moment we pass on that information, then we, be, we become a part of that slander, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So can we see how both of these verses from the Bible contain principles that can also be found in the tech? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So sowing tears. So, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. What this tells us is, so when the blade was sprung up, every time we strive to accomplish our postulates, 
Don't our own aberrations hinder our progress? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Every time we try to do something positive, sometimes we are the one that unravels our own idea. Correct. Okay. Self-doubt does more to sabotage individual potential than all external limitations put together. So the scripture says, let them grow together. Let them both grow together until the harvest. Mm -hmm. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, what could the harvest be representation of? Uh, from a personal perspective or dianetically speaking? Personal perspective. We just want we want to hear everyone's cognitions. What what could be the what could possibly be the harvest? <clears throat> well, I would say uh, sphere and up basically being able to uproot it and see that because I went through a situation where I was hesitant because fear. I was fear, feeling fearful and I was sitting there. I said, you know what? I said, there's no God but Allah. And the fear just disappeared. And I went and did what I had to do. So I see that as oh, the tear growing with the wheat within myself and just learning how to uproot it. Okay. And um, just studying Dianetics and along with the supreme wisdom it's just really making a law sufficient and clearing up all of the you know all of the garbage the engrams working on that and you know getting to the to the eye within myself getting okay. to the eye yes sir so then would it be so let me let me hit it from this perspective then so a harvest would be the time that a farmer <clears throat> reaps the benefit of all the work they use with regards to planting seeds and the hard work that's involved in that. The harvest is reaping the benefits uh, uh, of what was done, correct? Yes, sir. yes, sir. So now based on what Sister Sharon just said, the fact that she faced that fear, that's like a harvest where she's reaping the benefits of the work that she has put forth because, and I'm, 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 I'm saying this, correct me if I'm wrong, had, had you not gone through what you've gone through and studied what you've studied, could you say that you would have faced your fear the same way? No. Okay. So I would still be sitting in the same spot. <clears throat> so you're like a farmer that has reaped the benefit of, of, doing some farming, but the farming has been in yourself, correct? Yes, you know, sir, farming. absolutely. Okay, okay. Anyone else? What, what could be the harvest? Well, based on what Sister Sharon said and what you just said, it comes to me that the harvest is a cycle of action. Okay. Completing a cycle of action. Yes, sir, completing a cycle of action. Mm -hmm. So when Sister Sharon applied what she's learned, she actually completed a cycle of action as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone was, else for harvest? I was thinking survival. How so? Uh, because both of them is growing together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we, we're going to see who can survive. Uh, who can survive the tears. Being among the among the wheat, if if we call ourselves the wheat, uh, because now we we're, we're not just growing by ourselves. It's other stuff there, you know. Uh, I guess trials and tribulation or whatever. I, let them let them both grow together. You know, it's not going to be. I don't want the tears here with me. It's like you getting the tears and everything is going to tear you up if you, if you can't survive until the, until the day of harvest. You know, it's like the, it's like 
is the to the ones that that will survive to the end. So that's mm -hmm. the way I was looking at that part. So would you say the wheat and the tear could represent the believers and the disbelievers? Uh, yes, and the hypocrites, all of them, just bind in there together. And uh, let's let's see, let's let's see who who we really are. Can stuff affect us to the point where we no longer weep no more? You know, you can't mm -hmm. tell the difference. You know, it's where the pot stirs and everything in there, <laughs> you know, is getting getting uh, uh, touched, mm -hmm. you know, and you're not going to be left alone, <laughs> you know, just saying you believe, I guess that's sort of coming to my mind, you know, mm -hmm. not be tried. The harvest is, is, is the trying you as mm -hmm. well. Now, that's what I see. Okay. So could we also apply this to what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said when he said he will get you safely <laughs> to the other side? And he will not say, look at what I have done, but what Allah has done. If we have to go through this trial by fire and the minister has given us the tech to remove the grief, especially since grief, he says, is a tool that Allah will use during this time period. Then could we not say that he has given us the tools to get through the fire? Yeah. Could, we, could, we, could we make that connection? I, I could. Okay. I could. Okay. Yeah, because it's fire now. <laughs> Wait a minute. I see an L after that Deborah, uh, that Deborah up there. Sister Deborah, Assalamu alaikum. Wa well, alaikum salam. How you doing? I'm finding yourself. It's good to see you. Well, see Praise you. Great to be to Allah. Sister Anya, she invited me. She's like, get on today. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me go ahead and get on and see what's going on. Okay. But um, so good to see you all. And of course, I'm coming in um, later. But just to your question, um, I, I'm not exactly sure exactly what you all have covered to this point. But what stood out to me and what you uh, have here on the board is um, when I look at the tears in terms of Dianetically speaking, I'm thinking of the tears as being aberrations or engrams and that those aberrations or engrams, we could say that those make you other than yourself. And then having them to be bundled together and burn them is, is having those engrams, the uh, charge off of the engrams burned off. And when you burn off the charge of the engram, then you can be your own self, your, your original self, your, and, and operating your original mind, which would be considered the wheat. Um, because uh, at this point, you don't have the engrams that are um, driving you, and the wheat can represent that which can be made useful and turned into something of value. So you take the wheat and turn it into bread, and of course, as the scripture talks about the bread of life, you know, eating that daily bread, being yourself, being able to operate in your true self. So you're looking at this from the perspective of, <clears throat> if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, the, the tear in the wheat could almost be like the same individual and the tear portion is burned off in order to leave the wheat. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Because at the end, at the end of the day, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Okay. I like that. Well, you're 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 right in step with uh with the concept. The the main concept is we're dealing we're dealing with the elements of an engram, but we're using the earth as a demo kit. How the planting with seed can be used to represent the reactive mind. So we're dealing with, we're dealing with botany uh, and we're using botany as a demo kit to illustrate the concept of aberration. Yes. Sir. Using a verse from the Bible and we're gonna use a verse from the Holy Quran and we're gonna tie Bible, Holy Quran and Dianetics all together. That's where we're going. Praise and we are, we are grateful and thankful to see you with us again, Sister Deborah. Sister Anya. Thank you for having us. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Sister Anya. Um, 
what came and another thing that came to my mind was um, that the tear um, could also repre represent that which tests the metal of the wheat and that that's why it's allowed to stay until the time of the harvest and let them grow together because as we grow and evolve um, deeper into the wisdom and the teachings and start cleaning ourselves up Allah wants to know um, how you know how genuine we are in in saying that we believe and so we have to be tried in the furnace of affliction yeah. And so that the tears are there to test us, um, test the metal, and do we become um, sickly wheat, or do we become undeveloped wheat, or do we become hardy wheat, because that's a phrase that's often used to describe wheat, hardy wheat, mm -hmm. meaning that it was able to withstand through um, harsh conditions, you know, maybe um, I think one of the techniques that they use to um, improve the strength of, um, of a plant is to subject it to adverse conditions, you know, maybe giving it not quite enough water that it actually needs, which enables the plant to dig its roots deeper to, to um, find the, the water source that it needs to keep itself going. And, and because of that, the plant is strengthened and can now survive in, in good conditions because it's, it's learned how to survive in harsher conditions. And so that comes to another parable where um, in, in the Bible, when it talks about, um, or is it in the Quran where it says, if, if um, if you know if a good rain um, falls upon it it grows well but if light rain if it's only light rain then that's sufficient enough for it and also another um, parable would be uh, the the um, the donkey that was in the ditch mm -hmm. and the stones that were thrown at it um, but what the donkey did was that it, the, the stones filled up the pit and the donkey was able to come, you know, to, to just walk out of the ditch because so many stones were thrown at it. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, I looked at it in that sense. Okay. Did the donkey have to dodge all those, those uh, stones? I'm sure some <laughs> of them, they hit, they hit a couple of them probably. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, you know, because he wasn't just stepping with stones coming at you. You know, he had to be dodge, okay? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, now let me let me pose this 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 perception. Allowing the wheat and the tear to grow together. Is it possible? And I'm gonna use the nation as an example. <clears throat> that there are certain individuals that are doing certain things. And what they do is being seen, but they have not been removed yet. Mm -hmm. Because is it possible that if 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 they were removed and other individuals not understanding the full story, is it possible that they would they, it would seem as though these individuals are being treated unfairly? Like, why do they treat that brother like that? You know, why are they doing that to that sister? Boom, boom, boom. But we don't know the full story. And by other people being treated a certain way, our misunderstanding might cause us to mistrust the leadership. Is it possible that that's why the wheat and the tear are growing together? That's, that's one a way. Until a certain time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I'm sir. talking about time. In okay. time, in time, you you will see where they are, where you are. <laughs> you know, time brings about a change. Either mm -hmm. you know you're gonna continue because you've been doing good, uh, uh, you know, uh, and you've been and 
either the real you and and you're serious about this or whatever and and in the end you know you'll see where you you know if you just did this for uh, vanity's sake or if you if you really into this mm -hmm. the word time came to me because okay. sooner or later you're gonna see <laughs> you're gonna see where you are at where you know where everybody's at I, mm -hmm. that's the way i'm looking at that beloved. okay go ahead brother timothy uh yes sir i, I definitely agree with what's, what's been said um one, one thing about that I had uh, seen about wheat and tear, they are similar, they look similar, but uh, when it's time for harvest, one bears fruit and one doesn't. Yes. So a tear is really a, a, uh, it's really a weed. And one thing about what weeds do among plants is that it, it steals nutrients from the other, the actual plant that you're actually growing. If you're growing uh, uh, tomatoes, there may be you know, weeds that come up that will steal nutrients from that plant. So you have to, you have to remove them um, at a certain point. You know, you have, they have to be removed. And uh, I remember um, uh, talking with our minister here and he was, you know, I guess speaking with the uh, the Mr. Louis Farrakhan about you know, conditions in the mosque. And he said, well, brother, you got out of weeds in your mosque. I was like, wow. So that's what he, he had said to us. <laughs> so, um, I just thought it was significant that you know this this this, this parable you know mm -hmm. relates. It's funny you say that. I was going to include a, a quote, and uh, somehow I just I forgot to put the quote in here. But there's a quote that comes from a book called "As a Man Thinketh." Are you, anyone familiar with that book, "As a Man Thinketh"? Yes, sir. And there's a part in that book where he talks about uh, the way them, and I'm paraphrasing it. Uh, he used we to reflect aspects of the uh, or elements of the mind, and he says that either you're gonna feed you're gonna feed things in your mind that will cause things to grow, or you're gonna feed the weeds. But no matter what you do, something is gonna grow. And uh, this concept is actually coming from I think, and we'll we'll get to the next ayah where why I posed this question to begin with. When I looked at the harvest, I looked at the harvest as being the time of the resurrection. I looked at the tares being bound as individuals that are aberrated being stuck on the time track. Okay. Because that's what aberration is. That aberration is when a person is stuck in the past, correct? Okay. But everyone's answers, everyone's answers are correct. Everyone's answers make perfect sense. So I'm not, so my answer is not the correct answer. Everyone's answer has, has been correct. I, I've actually gotten, gained more information from your cognitions as well. I said the burning could be re-stimulation. In other words, you know, the, the tears represent the, the, we said before the tears could be the disbelievers. The tears could be those that did not uh, follow the instructions that the minister gave with regards to the study of the Dianetics, because that's really something that's gonna help us. I know it's helped me, uh, especially with all the things that have happened over the course of the past 10 years. <clears throat> the, our Islam with the tech has helped me tremendously. But now those that may not have gotten the tech, bind them in bundles, they're gonna be bound now. So the individuals are stuck in the time track and burn them could be, that's the re-stimulation. And when we deal with burn, we're dealing with fire. We're dealing with the low tones, 2.0, 1.5, 1.1, correct? Y'all still with me? Yes, sir, we with you. Okay, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, what could be meant by the wheat in the barn? I just thought off the top of my head, the wheat could represent those that work to qualify themselves for positions awaiting them. Yeah. Does anyone else have what they, they would consider the wheat? Uh, Sister Deborah gave us a good uh, an explanation of what she saw as the wheat. Anyone else? And if that's the case, if that's the wheat, then what is the barn? Is that the big field? It, it could be, yeah. Big fields await the wide awake man. What else could be the barn? Where you the take hereafter. The hereafter could be the barn. Anyone else? 
What I said was the kingdom. And we're all saying the same thing. Okay. So we have to go through this fire to qualify ourselves for the kingdom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother Ukman. Yes. There's a scripture in the Bible that um, uh, is Zechariah. Zechariah. Okay. 13 verse 7 to 9. And to me, that verse speaks to this whole um, PowerPoint, this, this part of the PowerPoint, the wheat, the tear, the barn, all of that. Okay. Um, if somebody could pull that up, that, that was a verse that came in um, <clears throat> 2017. Brother uh, Malik, uh, previously Brother Tony. Okay. He, he came and he spoke at the mosque in Las Vegas and the laborers and the minister had just had a, a meeting. And so Brother Tony brought his notes to share with the believers. And in those notes, that verse was given to them. So it was given to us. It's Zechariah 13, verse 7, 9. And I got, the, I got it right here. Yeah, yes, sir. The, 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 uh, the translation I like the best was the, the, the NIS, the, um, the NIV, the N New International Version. That's the one I like the best. But yes, can, can you read that? Because that sure. speaks to. 7 through 9. Seven through nine, yes, sir. Okay. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Mm -hmm. Now here's, yes. an interesting, here's an interesting thought. Based on that, it says, and that shall come to pass that in the land saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, does the scripture say that two thirds of the stars will fall from heaven? It's one third. One, one third, third fall from heaven? Yes, sir. We're still yes, it's in Revelations. Okay. 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 Yes, uh, I, gotta, wrote, I wrote that one down. I got to study that. Now you gave me something else to study. But this is right in sync with what we're going, uh, we're, we're dealing with today. Mm -hmm. that there is a trial that's coming. We all have to go through it. There's no avoiding it, but it's a part of the process. So are we are we clear up to this point with regards to the relationship between the tech of Dianetics, the engram, and the usage of this parable from the Bible to kind of give us uh, some some spiritual equivalence? Are we clear up to this point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Sister Anya. <clears throat> um, I I don't have a reference for for this. Um, but I know I've heard um, somewhere in the teachings where um, the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as well as Mr. Farquhar, have spoken about um, Allah getting all of his people willingly or unwillingly. Mm -hmm. And I've read somewhere that um, in the scripture where those that is and, and I'm paraphrasing all of this now, but those that d don't come willingly, um, it, it's like they they eventually submit to the teachings, but they have to go through um, a whole lot lot of stuff because they didn't willingly submit in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I I liken that again to the wheat and the tear of, of the fact that the wheat, um, because 
as you were describing, that they went, they accepted and were obedient to study in the tech. So they were able to clear up their engrams and um, get to get higher up the tone scale much quicker. And they didn't suffer as much as those that didn't go through the tech. Um, still had their aberrations to deal with. And so they're, they're all coming along headed towards the kingdom. But it's just that some have a much bumpier road getting to the king kingdom. Those mm -hmm. that didn't um, work on themselves and clear up their aberrations as opposed to those that did. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, praise be to Allah. That's that's perfect. That's perfect. That's right in sync with everything we're dealing with. And then we're also told that there's going to be three years. And if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. I believe the minister said that the three years that we have to go through started with the passing of Sister Ava. Did anyone hmm? else? Hear that? Did anyone else hear that? No, yes, sir. sir. He, said, he, said yes. he said it started. He said the Sister Ava was plucked from the hedge. Yes, sir. Okay, but did you hear? Did you hear this comment, the statement, or comment that the three years started when Sister Ava passed? No, I didn't yes, hear sir. that. Huh? The minister, when the minister was speaking, he he spoke about Sister Ava, and the minister mentioned that. I, I yes. heard him say, "Yes, sir." Wow. Yeah, I heard him say that Sister Ava was part of the removing of the hedge. I, did, okay. I didn't hear the three years, but I did say that her death was part of the removing of the hedge around him. Okay, so let me let me. Was this take a part of back. her denial? Huh? Was this was this part of the 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 genaza that he did? I believe so. I will I will get the actual facts on that, and okay. uh, I'll I'll bring the actual facts on that. Uh, but yes. I was told that that statement was made, and oh. then. If that's the, and that's the case, we, but we we do remember hearing that in the three years, there's going to be one year that's the hardest, that's the that's that's worse than the other two, correct? I've heard that. Right. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Okay. So now everyone will be afflicted. Everyone. Now, everyone's going to go through this fire. Well, how well how can you how can you verify this? So let's let's look at an ayat from the Holy Quran. And then see if we can parse through it and make it relevant. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, if a wound has afflicted you, a wound like it has also afflicted the disbelieving people. And we bring these days to men by turns that Allah may know those who believe and take witness witnesses from among you. And Allah loves not the wrongdoers and that he may purge those who believe and deprive the disbelievers of blessings. Now, can we at least say that everyone is going to be afflicted? If a wound has afflicted you, a wound like it has also afflicted the disbelieving people. So the believer and the disbelieving people will be afflicted. Can we agree on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. The next part shows how it's going to be done. And we bring these days to men by turns. And then it gives us the why it's going to be done. That Allah may know those who believe and take witnesses from among you. Ooh. Allah loves not the wrongdoers. So what is the purpose of the affliction? There's two purposes here. To purge those who believe and deprive those who disbelieve. So it's one trial, but it, it serves two purposes. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so now let's do some word clearing. <clears throat> so we have wounding, which everyone is going to get or everyone is going to receive. But there's two. So you have one cause. Wounding is a cause, but it's going to produce two effects, purging or depriving. We clear on that point. Yes. Okay. So if a wound has afflicted you, well, in Arabic, the word for wound is karhun, which means to demand. It also means to demand in a brash manner or to suggest. 
Okay. So here's the wound. When you look at the word suggest or, de or demand, what is that in the language of Dianetics? Internally. Isn't that an engram? We could say it's an engram, but let's deal with something specifically that's in the engram. Is that a key in? It's, it, it, can, it can be keyed in, but there's something specific that makes an engram an engram. You have the wow. moment of unconsciousness or pain, but there's a, there's a third thing that has to be present for an engram. Demon circuit. The circuit. And what does the circuit do? It demands or suggests, correct? Right. Yes, sir. Okay, if you if you go into the Dianetics book and you deal with the chapter dealing with I think it's called the uh, uh, demons, I think. Yes. And there's another chapter dealing with the reactive mind, but he deals with one specifically with with demons. And he says there's all types of demons, and he said some people had as many as four demons. Correct. Mm -hmm. if you read that chapter, you see he makes the statement four demons. Our lessons say four devils. Right. Four devils. Yes. Okay. So there's another there's another marriage between the supreme wisdom and the supreme tech. So we have now what would we call something outside of ourselves that makes demands on us? I was thinking about pressure. Say what? Suppressive. A okay. suppressor or a suppressive person, right? Yes. Okay. So the wounds come, the wound is based on something we have inside called the circuit, but that wound was afflicted uh, was given to us by an individual on the outside, correct? Yes. yes. So on our in our past, all of us had a nurse that stuck a needle in our brain, in other words. <laughs> it was someone who was supposed to nurse us and they wound up doing something that caused us some problems. Does that yes, make sense? Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And that, Brother Lukman? Yes. So that would be the pro survival Ingram, right? The one that has some level of affinity in it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Sister Shayla's been on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pro survival engram. Those are the engrams that we, we hold on to uh, to protect us, but they're really not good for us. They are the worst type of Ingram, yeah. the worst. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. Now, if you want to see an example of the demon circuit from the perspective of the Holy Quran, look at Surah 50, verse 21. It talks about what's called the driver and the witness. Mm. And the word driver in Arabic is sayakun. And sayakun when you look up that word in an Arabic dictionary, brings you to something called an engineer or someone that drives, someone that some something that forces. So we all have a driver and a witness. And when you clear those terms in Arabic, it, it brings us to uh, the genetic entity or that part in us that drives us to do what we don't want to do, which is called compulsions, correct? Mm -hmm. yes, or obsessive sir. behavior mm -hmm. and the witness in Arabic brings us to the word shahid which uh, describes in dianetic terms the time track and the file clerk a file clerk means um, someone that the file clerk can retrieve the files correct mm -hmm. yes, sir. it's interesting that the same word for witness in Arabic it also means a notary uh, notary was a notary public Mm -hmm. And their job is to record inf certain in important information. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. sir. So here, here, all these terms are coming together. Now, the the in per the person on the outside that afflicts the wound has produced what's called enforced ARC. So if we look back on our time track. Those individuals that stuck a needle in our brain, they enforced affinity, they enforced reality, or they enforced communication on us, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And the enforced communication is usually what's considered to be the demon circuit. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we flowing so far? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, when you look at the word affliction, a wound has afflicted you. The wound is the cause. <clears throat> the wound is the cause. Okay. The affliction is the effect. Dr. Dr. Gabor Mate, he's a, a, a psychologist that not only am I just listening to him, but I'm studying him because the way in which he explains this is, is just profound. He says, it's not what was done to you that was the problem. It was how it affected you is the problem. Yeah, I respond. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that the Arabic word for affliction is massa. <laughs> yes, massa. Wow. Yes, massa. No, massa. In Arabic, the word massa means to harm, impair. It means insanity and mental derangement. So not only are you giving, say, responding, but you're telling them what he is. So the infliction is what's called the inhibited ARC. It's what we're not allowed to say, what we're not allowed to agree to, and what we're not allowed to have an affinity for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And that's why some of us will fly off the handle when someone tells us what we can't do. Then we have to, to kind of see another side of us, right? Sister Shayla? Burning down the house? <laughs> If, you, if someone tells us what we can't do or what we're supposed to do, a whole nother person comes up, a whole nother valence. So can we see how the wound and the affliction could be seen as a cause and effect? Yes, sir. Yeah. It, it could be seen as a cycle of action. Mm -hmm. When you enforce something, that's the start. It changes something within me and then I'm going to stop what you're trying to start, basically, the cycle of action. So the wounds that afflict us could be demon circuits. Those are the voices in our heads. Surah 114 says the whispering of the slinking devil who whispers into the hearts of men. And the word heart in Arabic means mind. So the whispering Satan is that voice that whispers within ourselves that contribute to our coins. Do we remember what the word coins, the, the, ac the, uh, the acronym coins represents? Yes, yes sir. Compulsion, obsession, compulsion, obsession, insanity, neurosis, psychosis. Psychosis. And we know psychosis starts with a P, but it, it, it sounds better when you put an S on the end, right? Yes, sir. Yes, I okay, those are the coins. Okay. Judas had what, 30? He got 30 uh -huh. coins? 30 pieces mm -hmm. of silver? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe that means he became really, really aberrated. He had 30 demons. Who knows? Yeah, he had to because he was envious. So yeah. he was yes. envious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so wounding, purging, and depriving. He may purge those who believe. So here's, here's so now, when I, when I saw this, I said to myself, do you mean to tell me all the stuff I suffered as a child was done for a reason? That at the time, I was not aware. I was not aware of it. So at that time, I was saying to me the same thing Jesus probably said on the cross. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why would, so before my coming into Dianetics, you know, I had to deal with some stuff on my time track. And for years, I had to ask myself the question, if Allah was such a loving God, why would he allow that to happen in my childhood? Does that make sense? I think everyone can relate to that. Yes, sir. I said the same thing. You know, we why would I, as a child, have to go through a period of abandonment? A child of that age shouldn't have to go through that. And then when I learned the dynamics behind why I was allowed to be alone as an infant, for a little while, I had to ask myself, to, you know, I had, I was like, I was questioning my, my parents. But then I got more data. And then I understood that, and it goes back to what the minister tells us, you know, we, we shouldn't, you, you can't judge our parents because 
hell, our parents were just as aberrated as we are. And they just passed the aberration down. So on one level, it's just not their fault. And now I was able to make peace with that. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Now that we're yes. adults, that we know what we know. But before mm -hmm. that, exactly that is like, question all the question. Mm -hmm. Like question all the question. I I am... Um, I was driving my grandson this morning and I said, let's say a prayer for your mommy. So we did this prayer and he says, so tell me what does that really mean? <laughs> I thought to myself, I wish when I was a child, I had the courage to ask these questions because I did. Where is God in all? Why am I, you want me to pray to who? Where is he when I'm in this eternal hell? Like, no, nah, you adults are wrong. But this child had no, and I said, sure. You know, it was just very refreshing and very welcoming from my perspective. But in my childhood, you don't question God. And I would, I would think this. I would never say this then. I'm not questioning God. I'm questioning you. But you don't know. So you're going to tell me something stupid that I'm going to sit here and just say, be quiet. Because that's all I can do. Because if I was big. I can avoid what would come if I open my mouth. That's all I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very transparent and I just straight. straight. Mm -hmm. But yes, and, and I realized that all of that hell was necessary to make me into who I am. I Now I say praises be to Allah for the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. This was never before the teachings and definitely not before Dianetics. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that the minister has said, and I'm paraphrasing it, and again, if you, if you remember the minister saying this, just you know, add add the uh, uh, the information. The minister said something to the effect that Allah would have to create a problem that only He could solve. Mm -hmm. So now all of us have suffered based on something from our childhood, and then. Allah puts a man such as the minister in our lives who gives us the tech to show us how to remove the pain that we've been dealing with our whole life. Does that, does that kind of hit home with everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. So then, so then our pain was necessary so that at, a, at the proper time, we would gain a personal relationship with that one that orchestrated the whole event. Wow. Yeah. Okay. He may purge those who believe. Let's look clear these words in Arabic. Or we'll, we'll clear the terms. The word purge means to put to the test, to put right, or to examine. But guess what else the word purge means in Arabic? To render clear. Mm. So to purge the believers means to, also means to clear, the, to render the believers clear. And that's straight from the Arabic dictionary. I didn't, I didn't write that myself. I just highlighted it. <clears throat> so to purge means to render clear, to reappear or to reemerge. So you mean you mean I'm gonna come back to the surface? Then who then who have, who have I been looking at my whole life? I have no idea. Yes, sir. But the true me will mm -hmm. come back to the surface once all this other stuff is removed. So I've never really known my true self. How many right. of us can think back prior to the teachings and see that person and say, who the hell was that? Right. Yes, sir. Pretty it's not the well. person we look at now. Right. I had this conversation, Brother Luke, my, with my daughter about mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her, I said, I'm just coming into knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I said, I have everybody stuff on top of me. I said, from my mother to her parents. Her parents, parents, just going back, you know, in the history of our ancestors. I'm like, I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. And I said to my daughter, I said, you have my garbage on top of you and everybody else's that I was dealing with. My, my siblings, everybody I came into contact with. 
Mm-hmm. And she was just like, wow, yeah, that's true. And I said, so we have to uh, work on getting, getting to the I, getting to who we are, who Allah created us to be. Mm-hmm. And that's really getting to the God within. So the, the cleansing, the purging, it makes sense. And, you know, just looking at myself in the mirror, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you really? Who are you that Allah created you to be? So that just resonates with me. Okay. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Go ahead, Sister Denise. So I don't want to say the more hell you, you go through, the stronger you become. But it, it seems like that's part of the part of the process of of becoming at 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 one because it's like what can you do to me? Um, Nisi, um, she was on roots with uh, what's his name Gates, and because um, she was uh, looking back in her ancestry, you know, and she said she always had a saying that whatever it takes and uh and that would get her through whatever she was going through whatever whatever it takes and then she found out that that wasn't just a slogan she had <laughs> had uh, made for herself that that's how her family got through all of what they went through back in the 19 and 1800 up to and 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 so she was saying i see why i have that saying whatever it takes Mm -hmm. whatever it takes to get through this Mm -hmm. this you know and that's why i said it's not the those who are strong but that endurance (laughs) you know endure everything to the to the end you know get to that point Mm -hmm. yes all right praise be to a lot thank you Uh, let's see Okay, so this fire, the wounds that afflict us, the aberrations that were implanted in all of us. Okay, I don't think anyone here was born on the mothership. So all of us had something implanted based on our our past. Why does he fear now that he's a grown man? Because he was taught to eat the wrong food as a child is like a, a principle to me that illustrates that certain behaviors I have now are based on what was implanted when I was a child. For a number of years, I couldn't understand why I did not like being alone. And then at a certain time, I posed the question to my father. He didn't really didn't want to answer because he didn't want to sound as though he was bad because my parents separated when I was really young. And he didn't, my, even though my parents were separated, my father wouldn't disrespect my mom but he didn't want me looking at my mother in a different light. And I, I've never judged my mother uh, judged my mother based on this, but it's just a reality of something that happened. I've heard, there's one doctor I heard, uh, they, said, they said that your earliest, the earliest memory that you have plays a part in certain aspects of your life where you are today. And the earliest memory I have and I can still see it as if it was yesterday, for me, is waking up on the couch, the Star Spangled Banner was playing on the TV, and those that are old enough remember when TV actually went off at a certain time. And I can still see the TV, it had a UHF dial and a VHF, this was before cable, This this is prior to 1975. I can see my chubby little legs and I jump down off the couch. I turn the TV off and I go to my room. And for years, I asked myself the question, why was I home alone at that time? Which TV went off at what, 12 o'clock midnight? Was that the time or one o'clock in the morning back then? Am I the only one that, am I the oldest one in the room? I mean, 
No, sorry. I don't know, but it was fine. I think it was, it was 12 o'clock. Say what? It was 12 o'clock, brother. 12 o'clock was when yeah. TV, the Star Spangled Band. Yeah. Midnight. 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 This, this concludes our broadcast from today, <laughs> and then it right. came back on the next day at what, like 6 a.m. TV came back on, and then you just had them, the, the, the sound and then those colors that went across the screen. Yeah, the pattern. The little pattern there, TV actually went off. I still have that memory and I can recall everything in that room. So I had posed the question to my dad. I said, was there a time I was left alone? Because I knew my father worked third shift at General Electric at that time. He, so he worked nights. My mother left me alone to go do whatever she was doing. And I spoke to my godmother. She confirmed it. You know, So my whole life, I had been carrying around certain things based on that. So I say that to say that all of us have something that happened to us, but there's a reason why it happened. Okay. Those of us that follow the instructions given to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan <clears throat> will go through a process of being purged of whatever suffering we've encountered. And I believe this corresponds to that 20 year period that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in closing the gap that corresponds to the year 2012 up into the year 2032, where our mind will be made clean. I don't think that's a coincidence that we came in contact with the tech of Dianetics. So we're halfway through this process of our of going through a process of uh, having, as the most time Elijah Muhammad describes it, the brown germ removed. So is this brown germ the reactive mind? I don't know. But what happens to the disbelievers? It says, the ayat in the Holy Quran says, deprive the disbelievers of blessings. Well, the word deprive is mahaka. And it means to deprive, erase, efface, or blot out. <clears throat> so the wounds that afflict us could be tests for the believers, but also the acts that will be done to remove those that don't believe. Sister Denise, you still had no question? I see your hand is still up. Okay. So quick summary. Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30, is a biblical representation of how we can find and use the tech in the form of parables. Does that make sense? Did we find agreement between the Bible and Dianetics? Did we get the ARC in there? Yes, sir. Okay. Did anything come up on the time track for, for anyone with regards to things from the past? Yes, sir. Okay. Are we all right now in present time? Yes, sir. I am. If any, if anyone found something during the course of this part that needs some processing. Please get in contact, sisters, get in contact with a sister, brother, get in contact with a brother, get in contact with someone that can process us through whatever events may have come up, whether it be Dianetic processing or, or straight wire. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is the tree of Zakum. Now, what does that look like there? A face. It looks like a face, right? Yes, sir. Now, this is just a picture that I got off the internet. This is what the buds on this plant look like. That's a tree? The tree of Zakum. It's a real it look tree. like demons. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it. I just, I, I Googled it. This is the tree of Zakum that's described in the Holy Quran. Ooh. Okay. Now the word tree, now, so we have the tree of Zakum. Now watch this, tree in Arabic means to argue, quarrel, or dispute. Well, as soon as we argue, quarrel, or dispute, haven't we been taught that the spirit leaves us? Right. Yes, sir. So if the spirit leaves us, then don't we, aren't we becoming re-stimulated? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. The word in Arabic means argument something in the form or resembling a tree. Now watch this. So if it's resembling a tree, it means a diagram or graph that branches, branches usually form, 
is supposed to be usually form a simple stem or vertex. So when something branches out, what could that describe from the perspective of Dianetics? Something branching out into other things. Yeah. Valences. Is that valences, I'm looking for something specific. Disperse. Kinda. A I was thinking chain. along the lines of chains. Chain of engram chain. Like engram chain. But the valences, the valences are a part of yeah. uh the chains. And they do cause us to disperse because we're hitting ridges, correct? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So this tree of zakum, let's see what the word zakum means. Okay, I'm thinking pathways of trains. So we're talking we're talking about the time track, chain, we're talking about chains, chains of engrams. Now the word zakum means to swallow, gulp, or gobble. That's the Arabic word, zakama. Swallow means to accept without question, protest, or resentment. In our lessons, that's described as what? Taking things on face value, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So on one level, the tree of Zakum could be a branch or chain of resentment. Can we, uh, do we see the correlation? Yes. Okay, if we're dealing with resentment, when we resent someone, we resent them, why? Because they enforced something on us and they inhibited us from doing something. So we now we now we have resentment, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. So this tree of Zakum could be symbolic of chains that contained ARC breaks. Does that make sense? Who did I just lose? Who who doesn't know what an yes, ARC makes sense? Who doesn't know what an ARC break is? I don't think I understand it fully. Okay. An okay. ARC break is when someone it's it's it, in other words, it's a disagreement. Right. When someone forces affinity reality or communication on you and it's something that you don't want to accept, communicate or agree to, that's an ARC break. Mm -hmm. Okay. When one fall, they all fall. Right. Yes, sir. So you can have an ARC break based on what was enforced or what, what was inhibited. For example, when an individual if you go based on the relationship and you find out the person did something they weren't supposed to do, that was that caused a break. That was an ARC break. Has anyone ever told someone to go to hell? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now we understand. Okay, that's an ARC that's a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. We got to speak the language in its proper term. <laughs> Has anyone ever cussed somebody out? Oh, yeah. That was based, that's based upon an ARC break. They did something, they said something, or they tried to force you into something that you didn't want to do. So instead of being inhibited, you kind of responded back. You did what's called a, 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 a dramatization break. You broke the dramatization. And we were talking about that yesterday. When, when when certain if you come across someone and they try to impose something on you, nine times out of ten they're dramatizing as well. But when you jump down someone's throat and they stop and looked at you and they're shocked and now they're speechless, what did you do? You just broke their dramatization. What you did was you put a lock on them. That's why that's why individuals. Uh, that's why certain individuals, they don't like it when you talk back to them <laughs> you know i'm in the grocery store this this individual bumps my wife by mistake well no he, he bumped my wife i don't care if it was by accident or my mistake 
But when I question him on it, you know, I'm staring him down. He's looking at me. Uh, do you have a problem? And I said, nope, you're about to have one. It kind of stunned him for a minute. He didn't he didn't expect that response. Like Sister Anya said yesterday, he thought this was still, you know, 1820 or he might have thought we we're still in a plantation. It's not that kind of party anymore. So when you step to certain people, it breaks their dramatization. That's why they kind of don't understand how to handle that. Now, if you throw three Allahu Akbar's behind that, that really breaks the dramatization. Go ahead, Sister Anya. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was looking at the word, and it's interesting that you used the word swallow. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you were talking about, you know, ramming something down someone's throat, um, which in, in your second, in your defini first definition there, to, to gulp or gobble. But then uh, looking at the second one, to accept without question, protest or resentment. And as I looked at the word, I saw the word allow. So oh, wow. to, accept, to accept without question, protest or resentment, you just, it's, it's like that, um, what is it, the, the, the panther, or is it the panther? Yes, that the, the panther, yes. And, and instead of running or attacking, you just... Um, what's the word? Is a particular word that they use. You you just submit or sub what is you it? Succumb. Su succumb. You succumb. succumb. You just allow it to happen. But then I also saw saw the word wallow. Oh wow! I got. I'm getting goosebumps just now. Yeah. And and one of the definitions of wallow is to remain in an unhappy emotional state without trying to get out of it as if you are enjoying it or trying to get sympathy from other people. Ooh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know why that sounds like a pig. Well, it's, it, it says, you know, to ro another definition is to roll at oneself about in a lazy, relaxed or ungaining manner, such as hogs wallowing in the mud. Ooh. Now, how about we connect that to the word wall that's in there, too? How about that? Mm, 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 mm. And low. <laughs> oh, here we go. Is, is Mother Tanetta in the room? <laughs> Mother Tanetta's spirit is present. <laughs> wow. Wow. I didn't see all that. Praise be to Allah. My tone is up. It also means, again, here you go, Sistania, to keep from expressing or showing, to repress. That all ties into what she uh that what Sister Anya just gave us, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Sister Anya, were you finished? Do you have some more jewels to drop on us? No, that's it. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, in the language of Dianetics, that's called inhibited ARC. Synonyms: choke back, repair, repress, stifle, strangle, or suppress. Here we go back to the word suppresses again, correct? Mm. Gulp, to swallow hurriedly or greedily. Anyone else? I'll keep moving. To gobble means to take in eagerly. So the tree of Zakun allegorically, this is just based on my perception, and please, if you have your cognition, please share them. The tree of Zakun could represent a complex of branches, pathways, or chains that contain enforced and inhibited ARC. Now, when we looked, actually looked at the tree, didn't it look like people's faces on those branches? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A bunch of skeletons. Now, whose faces would those represent? And what did the branches represent? Could those faces represent valences? Yeah. 
So our tree of Zakum could be our time track, correct? Mm. It's awfully quiet. I mean, have I, is anyone still? Yes, sir. You know, you know the, the picture that you showed of those faces mm -hmm. um, representing the tree of Zakum, it, it reminded me of the, the movie, um, so the Philadelphia Experiment, when those people were going from one time period to another, but they got stuck, they got stuck in the wall. Right, that's what it reminded me of. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you were talking about the, us being stuck on the time track. Here's a movie. Uh, what Dreams May Come with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Robin Williams. Has anyone ever seen that movie? Yes, sir. Okay, that's actually that's actually based on a book called Dante's Inferno. Right. Yes, sir. But there's a part in there where people are actually frozen in the mud and they're just their faces are sticking out. Do you remember that 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 scene? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm hearing an echo. Okay. So the enforced ARC and inhibited ARC comes in the form of people words and actions does that make sense yes sir okay. so these are elements of the engram you have a moment of unconscious you have pain and unconsciousness and then you have the words but the words come from people correct so the moments of unconsciousness and the pain, there was some action that caused the pain. The pain caused the unconsciousness. And there were people that said words. These are the elements of an engram. There is no mystery God. So every engram is an effect that is produced by a cause. And that cause is an event. And in that event, is a person that said something or did something. Does that make sense? All right. Yes, sir. So, really, also, you don't have to be um, unconscious uh, because you say it comes in the form of people, words, and action, right? Well, when if you're conscious of it, someone says something that could be that could be the key in or the lock. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the key in or the lock is you're conscious. There's no unconsciousness. Someone comes up and, and says something or does something, that is an event that takes place while you're conscious that can key in what's buried under the surface. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. It's very important that we don't forget that it's always someone, not something, someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone, not something. Right. Because something has to come from someone. It has to come from someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why well, would I have a question with that, brother Luke Mar. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the screen for just a second. There's 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 some there's some mass I want to use to to drive this point home. But go ahead, Sister Sharon. Yes, sir. So we know the someone creates the engram, but also sounds in the environment like a fire truck is passing water's running or whatever don't doesn't that add to the engram no that 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 could be a key in or a lock because that's that's part of those are the the engram has perceptics okay so that that sound can key in the engram or turn it on basically okay okay yes, sir. this is now we come to this. Can anyone see my screen now? Yes. What's, that, what's on my screen? A seed growing. A potato with a shoe. Okay. So let's look at the soil. If that was underground, then that's what you can't see, correct? So we're going to say the soil is a demo kit for the reactive mind, the subconscious, that which we can't see. And what's out here is the analytical mind, correct? Yes, sir. So this seed, we could say, is the implant, something that's beneath the surface 
that we don't know is there. So now what happens to the circuit that's buried underneath? When it gets the right nutrients, what happens to it? It grows, expands. So now th we could say that this seed has been keyed in, correct? Yes, sir. And the minister teaches us that it, it shoots a stem down before it goes up, right? Correct. Yes, sir. So you have the implant, you have the key in, which produces the lock because now the seed is stable, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And what comes above the surface could be considered the, the aberration. That is so cool, that, that graphic. That's really cool. Now, when you look at the roots, could we say that those represent the chains? Yes, sir. Are those the chains? And and those chain those those roots are moving like what? What animal would you describe them as moving like? A spider. Spider, snake. Yeah. Okay. A worm. Say what? Worm. Um, worm? I don't know if you say it in English. Un gusano, a, a worm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the bottom line not is, if, warm, if you, not the weather warm, but the, the the one in the in the earth, the little worm. worm. No, we got you. We got you. Okay. <laughs> so this is what came to mind when I was thinking about the demo kit because the seed would be the implant, but look at the chains or the roots that are connected to the circ the demon circuit. And what's keeping that which which come, is visible. We see the aberration. We see a person's behavior, but we don't see that it's based on something that's under the surface. Yeah. Weed expands. Weed is okay. just taking over. Exactly. It's just taking over. So there's a whole network of chains underneath that's keeping that circuit in place. So when we audit someone, when we can pinpoint the circuit, that's going to connect us to the chain and once we can remove the chain, what happens to the plant? It dies. That's what happens to the engram when you get to basic, basic. You're removing the root system. You're getting to the root of what was said because what was said connects you to what? Who said it? Yeah. So when you look at the auditing, there's those 10 steps. When you, if you have the manual, there's one part where it says, when you get an occluded case, can everyone still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I froze up there for a split second. When you get to what's called the included case, it'll tell you, I believe it's step maybe seven or eight. I'm not, I can't remember the steps off the top of my head, but there's one part that says, when you can't get any information on the time track, it'll say, listen, do you hear something? And you might just catch a little phrase or something. Freezing. And then you bring back, then you bring that person to present time. You do a pleasure moment, then you take them back. Okay. Can you look around? What do you see? What do you hear? You're trying to gather up little perceptives. And then the person might say, oh yeah, I was standing, I, I, I was in the kitchen and I remember someone saying X, Y, Z. Okay. And then you try to get some more perceptive and they say, well, who, who's in the room with you? Oh, my grandmother. Oh, it was my aunt. Oh, my aunt is the one who said. Now you've connected the circuit to an individual. As soon as you make those connections, you've taken off some energy from that engram, and now you're able to go work it. The part of the mind which is inaccessible to the conscious mind, but which affects behavior and emotions. Thank you, Sister Ani. That's perfect. So can we see how this little small little planting of a seed could be used as a demo kit to represent an engram? Or, or an aberrated individual. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Let me go back to here. Now let me go here. Now let me go back here. Now, can everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and land this plane. So the cursed tree. Now here's one verse from the Holy Quran. So this is going along the lines of your assignment for Sunday. I'm going to share what I see, but the assignment is based on these ayats, you go and you put this in the language that you know, meaning 
look into these ayats and see what you can find for yourself. Find out what your cognitions are. That's the homework for this weekend. Surah 17, verse 60 says, and we said to thee, surely thy Lord encompasses men, and we made not the vision which we showed thee, but a trial for men, as also the tree cursed in the Quran, and we warned them, but it adds to their great inordinacy. And I have inordinacy in bold print. So these are the key words I want us to look at for our homework assignment. Parse through this ayah, do some word clearing, and then find what find the jewels, as Minister Farrakhan said, find the jewels in here that Allah might show you. And then Sunday, those I'm not gonna I can, obviously I can't force anyone to share, but those who wish to wish to share their cognitions, Sunday is gonna be a time where we all can have a discussion based on what we find in the ayats and how it relates to the tech. And Allah willing, as you're going through this, you might be able to use this. Uh, with regards to scanning some locks or gaining back some theta from your own uh, time track. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. You may have your own cognition. Yes, mm -hmm. Next ayat is going to be Surah 37, ayat number 62 through 67. Is this the better entertainment or the tree of Zakum? Surely we made it a trial for the wrongdoers. See, it's not a trial for the believers. It's a trial for the wrongdoers. But then again, it could be all of us because we're all doing some kind of wrong. But our intentions are good. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. yes. We're striving. We know we, we all have faults, but we're striving to get right. It is a tree that grows in the bottom of hell. Now, what could the bottom of hell be dianetically? Um, going down the top of hell towards zero. Going down the tone scale towards zero. Perfect. Thank you. It produces, as it were, heads of serpents. Those are the little buds on the tree of Zakum, right? Those little faces you saw. All right. But now if it, if it produces, as it were, heads of serpents, how does this relate to Dianetics and going down the tone scale? If it Go ahead. Go ahead. Would that be like what you just demonstrated? We like, like those little, the, the, the wheat, the, you know, when you show the potato and all the, mm -hmm. the stems coming out of the potato going mm -hmm. in. So those are like serpents. Those okay. are serpents. Okay. But now let me, let me throw one, let me throw something else out there. And this is for anyone. If we're going down the tone scale and this is producing heads of serpents. What would the heads of serpents represent based on Dianetics? Suppressive persons. Suppressive persons on our time track. Right. Right. Those are the heads of serpents or could be. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Then truly they will eat of it and, and fill their bellies with it. Then surely they shall have after a drink of boiling water. Now, what could the drink of boiling water represent? Wow. Anyone? Chastisement of Allah. Chastisement of Allah. Chastisement of Allah. Who said that? Uh, Larry said it, my husband. Oh, I was wondering. I was like, wait, where's that voice coming from? <laughs> <laughs> The chastisement of Allah, and this is then they re, then their return is surely to the flaming fire. So does that mean that the chastisement will send individuals back to what we call chronic restimulation? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just giving you based on what I see, but the assignment is for you to to put it in that fine language that Allah shows you. Surely the tree of Zakum is the food of the sinful. Now, didn't we talk about swallowing and gulping and, okay? Like molten brass, it seeds in their bellies like boiling water, seize him. Now, what does see, what can we say about seize him? What could that represent on a, from Dianetics? Uh, a key in. It could be a key in which causes what? Look at the word seize. What does the word seize mean? 
to snatch. Of course, it's a lock. Lock. To lock, to snatch, to hold in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To oh, be stuck in the time track. Stimulate. Stimulate it. All, all those words are perfect. They all describe the same thing. So the, it says, so seize him. So he's stuck on the on the time on the time track. Then drag him into the midst of hell. What does that represent dianetically? Going down the tone scale. Going down the tone scale, Sister Tina. Going down that tone scale. Then pour on his head of the torment of boiling water. What does going down the tone scale have to do with my head? What's going on now? That's called what? He's messed up in the head. <laughs> yeah, messed up in the head or aberrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Taste thou forsooth the mighty honorable. Surely this is what you doubted. The minister said, minister said study the tech and there are individuals that doubted the minister in our study of the tech, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Those who keep their duty are indeed in a secure place. Now, where is the secure place representing? The yeah, opposite the of what's this? Yeah, the upper Four part point of the tone scale. Going up Four the tone off. scale. Right. Okay. Being dragged into the midst of hell could represent going down tone. The secure place could be going up tone, correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Oh, I think this is the last one. Then shall you, O oh, you who err and deny, eat of the tree of Zakum and fill your bellies with it, then drink after it of boiling water and drink as drinks the thirsty camel. This is their entertainment on the day of requital. So when we're talking about err and deny, what does err mean? Err means to be in error. Mm -hmm. What happens when we go, when we're dragged into the midst of hell, everything is based on the hell down seven, correct? Mm -hmm. Misinformation. Misinformation. Yes, so why are people in hell? Because they're holding on to misinformation. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going yeah. to give some, some, a quick summary. This will take 60 seconds and then we'll open the floor to questions and then we'll close it out. <clears throat> so this is just what I saw. But I want each one of us to go through this and find what you can find because it will help you in the long run with the, with the hopes that you might interbulate some theta some areas and get back some attention units. So the cursed tree of Zakum to me was the time track on one level. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Grows in the bottom of hell. That's talking about, again, what Sister Tina said, low on the tone scale. Heads like serpents, to me, represented the individuals on my time track, the suppressors. And it's funny because right when I said that, three faces popped in my head from my time track of stuff I went through. I remember this little girl named Demetrius. I was in the fourth grade. I think she liked me, but she's always pick on me. And there was times when I would, I would purposely not take the bus home and I would walk home from school. And there was one time I walked home and she still found me and picked on me. These, these, these serpents from my past are, are coming back. <laughs> says eat of it. To me, that's talking about restimulation, being restimulated. Okay. Fill their bellies. I'm in chronic restimulation. Drink boiling water. That's the aberration. Okay. Drink boiling water. How would one react if they were drinking boiling water? Oh my God, that would hurt. Yeah. And so, so what are some of the things that we would do? Yeah. Not drink it. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't want to drink it. We Come up and it. down, hollow. Yeah, hollow. Kind of like what we used to do when we used to drink the fire water. <laughs> If you understand what we're talking about. Oh my God. And right? create more hell for everything around us because our state will be so so much pain that everything around it will touch everything around us. Have, so are you saying that there was a time when we were so aberrated we were causing problems for those around us? Absolutely, I was. Okay. Yes, and, sir. and I was too. Drag him into the midst of hell to me was being pulled down into the lower tones. Seize him, to me, represented being stuck on the time track. Pour on his head the torment of boiling water. Extreme, like Sister Anya said, she, she had made, she had made, she said it kind of differently. Extreme emotional imbalance. And then err and deny. Err means to be in error. 
So we either have a lack of understanding or we misunderstand, and that's the root of our aberration. Nine times out of 10, and maybe tens out of 10, the reason why we're aberrated now is because there's a circuit in our head. We think it's ours, but our lack of understanding or misunderstanding, misunderstanding tells us that that circuit belonged to someone else. And as soon as we can come to the grips of finding the source of that circuit, we gain back a, a piece of our sanity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, and to deny means refusal to follow the instructions given to study the tech. Homework. Review each ayat and apply your understanding to each of these ayats with regards to what we have been taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and how it relates to the tech of Dianetics. So that's the assignment. Those four ayats. And if you want to go into the parable found in Matthew 13, do that as well. And then Sunday we will discuss and look at all the jewels. So we're going to go, we're going to go build a mother plane this weekend and bring our parts together on Sunday. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Sure. Be prepared okay. to discuss your cognitions, but we will not we will not force everyone to speak because I know some individuals they just like to sit back and listen. We would like if everyone could contribute, however, on Sunday, but no one will be forced to. Does anyone have any questions? Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, suggestions, you corrections, said, cognitions, anything. The floor is open before we close out. You said it was four sewers. The four sewers that were listed. 17, 60, 37, 62, 67, sewer 44, 43, 51. What was the last one? Well, let me see. Where did I have it written down at? You have sewer 17, verse 60. Yes, sir. Sura 37, it was 60, verse 62. Right, through 67. Sura 44, starting at verse 43. Yes, sir. And then Sura 56, starting at verse 52. Okay. And then if you want to do the, that, the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 13, that parable, you can do that as well. Oh, thank you. Okay, did anyone gain, did any case gain today? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any closing comments, statements, thoughts, concerns, questions, or corrections before we close it out? I was just thinking nothing, nothing is holding you back but you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't know where I got that from, but I was just thinking of all of this that you know we can give excuses and this is because of this, but nothing holds you back to choose. You, whatever you give the power to, you know? mm -hmm. Yes, sir, that's that's my cognition. I, re I remember when I pledged, one of the things we had to memorize was excuses. Excuses are the tools of the, the weak. There was another line that went along with that, but excuses were the tools of the weak. That's why you never, we should never use excuses. Anyone else? All right. All right, Sister Shayla. Inshallah, we'll see you on Sunday. Yes. Going once, going twice. Any closing comments? Is everyone toned higher than it was when you came on? Oh, yes, sir. Even if it's just yes, by sir. a degree, sir. even if it's just by a, just by a gradient. Sir. Is anyone toned lower than it was when you came on? No, sir. Okay, because if it was, then I have to direct you to the proper people to do some processing. Um, as far as I know, one of the the main individuals from the sister's perspective that's doing processing is Sister Angela. Now, does anyone know of any other sisters that are that that do processing? Uh, here in Atlanta, I know of some, but I I talked to Sister Angela, and she's in Jersey. Okay, okay. The main thing is that the sisters have someone uh, because these meetings can possibly re-stimulate. And I'm quite sure that during the process of this the Zoom meeting, has anyone gone through the time track and some things came up? Yes, sir. 
okay. some things I need to talk to, to Angela about. It, 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 exactly. Today. That's that's why I'm saying this because these meetings will be stimulate <laughs> individuals, and I don't want us to be re-stimulated and stuck on the track without a direction or an individual we can talk to to process that. Okay. Yes, sir. that's 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 key. Um, for the brothers, um, so we got brother Timothy, we got brother Wahid, brother Timothy, what city did you say you were in Virginia? Were you in, no, you were in Virginia. You're in, yes, sir. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Virginia, sir. Okay. Do you have any, any auditors where you are? Yes, sir. We got about, about four auditors in our, in our mosque. Okay. So the key point is, the main point is, during these meetings, have someone you can go to to process the stuff. I won't say stuff, I, I, not the stuff. The events that come come up, make sure you have someone you can contact to process that and get back some of those attention units. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, absolutely. All right. Um, does anyone have any meetings that are coming up that they would like to put in the chat or any announcements that they might have of something that they might be in the process of doing. Sister Sharon, did you ever complete that, that sisters group you said you're gonna do? Uh, no, sir. Um, after a while, sisters stopped getting on and then it was supposed to be um, another group going on. So we never completed that class. Was that something you were thinking about getting back up and running? Inshallah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I remember you getting that class together. Anyone else have anything they'd like to announce? Any wins? Anything before we close out? Brother Lukman, um, Brother Dawu, did he complete whatever? <clears throat> oh, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hey. So if anyone can reach out to him just to check on him, I, I did speak to him. Um, I, I, I No, I didn't. I, uh, we text back and forth. Okay. I, I would rather, I would rather he speak of that. Yes, sir. No, okay. not a okay. problem. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Wins, cognitions, future topics. Any future topics? Um. Yes, sir. Um. <clears throat> I have. I guess this. This would be a win, but it's from what happened on Sunday. Okay. Uh, to be interested, I know Brother Bettine used to teach on interested as opposed to interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's part of technology. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, it raises you on the tone scale to be more objective than subjective. Mm -hmm. To be interested rather than interesting, it raises you on the tone scale. And um, I bore witness to that on Sunday when you gave me a better way of looking at arrogance as opposed to someone being confident. Mm -hmm. So it made me become interested in that person, more interested in that person and other people in general. So that's part of the technology. Do you recall that from L. Ron Hubbard? Uh, I don't recall that from L. Ron Hubbard, but I will say that I learned a real important concept from a scientist that's in the room today. I won't mention any names, but one thing I learned from this wise scientist is that when you produce your own lesson plans, it makes your uh, it, it makes your delivery more high tone because you have you have played a part in producing your own lesson plan versus teaching from something that someone else gives you. The why scientists just to share it, I think you might have heard that same concept before. Yes, sir, from the yeah. wise scientists. The wise system. scientists in the room. I don't know if she would like to speak to that concept of teaching based on being interested in your subject matter. And she knows what I'm talking about, but she wants to she wants to maybe play like it. It must be 
the Deborah it's Echo. The Deborah. I was gonna say, <laughs> you, you all are really, really funny. You know, I'm sitting in the background and <laughs> working and, and just listening, but um, all praise is due to Allah. But I will say that I'm not wise, but I am praying for <laughs> health, wealth, and wise. You know what I'm saying? Being healthy, yes. wealthy, and wise. I yes. would love that. So that is something to pray for and to work towards. But um, yes, yes, you're absolutely right. And I don't think the, you said it. I mean, I could say it any differently than what you said is the, the connection between the material. Because mm -hmm. anytime you engage, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us in um, closing the gap in divine revelation, be it conversation with others or studying on it, it actually makes the brain cells oscillate at the highest wattage. Mm. And so when you begin to start focusing in on and studying and preparing a meal, so to speak, a spiritual meal, literally when you come before the people, you are so full and you're just passing out plates to everyone with a meal on it for them. So that is kind of the way that when you begin to start presenting something it is better that you first you know taste the meal before you give it to others because you know whether or not it's good or bad mm. oh sister deborah you just changed my whole attitude about that's cooking. that's what that's why i did it that's why i did it you had to, you had to knock the tone up a couple more notches <laughs> with that what she just said it made me appreciate the study group more mm. because what we're doing in study group. We're pre preparing a meal by studying before time, and then we come on and everybody share their meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's why. That's why I always luck, say right? your your cognitions are just as important. Look, that's a potluck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. All right. Come to the buffet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I say this last this last piece is like when the, when the disciples were with the with Jesus, Jesus had the whole loaf, but each disciple only had a piece. Mm -hmm. And I look at the minister as having the whole loaf, and as we come together, we we each bring our piece. But when we when we, but when we speak of the minister and what he has blessed us to receive, we're speaking about the whole loaf. But each one of us has our own piece of bread that we got from that loaf. Does that make sense? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you for that uh, that that little that little tone boost there, Sister Deborah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you all for having me today. Yes. <laughs> so that being said and done, uh, as soon as this boots up, uh, I'm gonna post this to the YouTube channel so everyone can have access to it. Eventually, what I'm gonna strive to do, I got to find the proper audit um, editing tools. I want to edit these instead of putting a video up there that's uh, two hours long. I want to either bring it up in the increments or list it in such a way that you can go to the, the YouTube video and find specifically the topics. Now, there's a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it yet, but inshallah, we'll get there. But that, would, that uh, being said and done, let us go ahead and close it out in prayer. Uh, would anyone like to do the honors? Yes, sir. I'll close out. Yes, ma'am. You got it. Attention prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of requital. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed, not those upon whom wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Amen. 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 family. Amen. 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 it. I started um, the I I can't wait to get back to it. I okay. was kind of sleepy last night, so I went to bed. So after this, I'm going to get back to it. But um, um yeah, I, I I I there are no parentheses or exponents. Well I can I'm good. I'll send you some more. I can I can I can get them a little more more difficult now. I do. 
difficult. I wanted I wanted more difficult, but this, but in what you sent me, um, it, it looks very simple. And when I started the first one, I actually uh, went out of order and I, I didn't finish it, but I said, oh, I, I, I realized it after I solved the first part of it. I did um, the addition part before the multiplication part. I said, mm. I said, I'm going to continue and see what my answer is. And then I'm going to go back and do it in the proper order and see what the answer is. You know, so, um, yeah, so, so, so this is going to be very interesting. They look easy, but the order has to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the yeah. way the universe no, works. We can't, we can't do yes. things the way we want to and, and think we're going to be yes. successful. Yes, sir. So, um, so please send me uh, another one with uh, all the bells and whistles. I will do that. You will receive that today. Okay, well, thank you so much. And I'm going to definitely let you know how this works out because I said, oh, man, he sent it. And that was late last night. I said, wow. So I started, but um, I was a little sleepy. So I'm going to continue on after this call. All right. Thank you so, so much. Because that welcome. really lifts my... I love doing those types of problems. And it, it really, you know... And while I'm doing it, I'm going to be thinking about, you know the order of myself you know mm -hmm. yeah. did you send the, that to before, us all i will yeah i will I whoever wants the worksheets just put your name in the chat i'll send them and the plan is before the end of the year we want everyone if you can't do algebra we want everyone doing algebra before the end of the year if you can do algebra we want to get you up to doing trigonometry oh yes 2023 is the year that we conquer algebra and trigonometry yes yes 2024 is when we start hitting calculus. Because this PEMDAS, working these problems, it, it helps get our mind into doing algebra, right? Properly doing algebra. It, it, that's the whole point. That you, once, you, once you understand the PEMDAS, it's taking you up the tone scale. You're getting back theta. Wow. And, and it's true, because I am. I sure am. That's where we're going. All right. All right, yeah. family. Uh, thank Ruben. you so much you're very welcome yes yeah, someone called me yes sir i did uh -huh. so the the pim dash that comes after the long division right yes okay i was asking that question because uh yeah he he had tutoring for the long division for months mm -hmm. in the pim dash and he had uh, some problems to do yesterday, long division, and he forgot how to do it. And I'm just like, what happened? So he's not, uh, I'm sorry. He's not holding on, retaining the information. And I, I said to him, I said, come on, Yassine, you could do this. We, we studied it for months and he had tutoring on it for months. And the PEMDAS also, but somewhere, what would you call it, a ridge or mm -hmm. some, something's going on? Well, here, here's what comes to mind, Sister Sharon, uh, based, on, based on what we yes, had sir. already discussed. There's, yes, there's okay, I'm going I'm to, I'm I'll explain it like this. Brother Yassin's mind is like a process in a computer. And when you have malware, some of the files get lost or misplaced there's some other things that are there that are the ridges that are keeping him from understanding because he's fully capable of understanding all of that right but when we were talking before and i was look I, I was seeing him yes there's some other programs going on behind the scenes <laughs> right okay there's 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 and some of it some of what you shared of what yes. took place at the, at the school itself. My biggest recommendation right now would be try to get Brother Yassin some processing. Yes, sir. Because once you once you remove those ridges, the sky's the limit. He's right. fully capable. But you can, you can, if you have a computer, 
if you don't get rid of those programs, those programs that are running behind the scenes are taking up processing speed. They're taking up space. Yes, sir. And you can have a computer that's brand new, but one little virus in there can have so many different things that take place. Yes, sir. Are you available so, for processing? Processing needs to be done through auditing. That would so, that is something that can't be done across this the screen. So he should be put into reverie. He needs to he needs to go into reverie and have someone actually start going after some of these engrams to get back some of that theta. Yes, sir. Now, if I if I lived in the the the, the New Jersey area, I would be more than happy to. But find a brother. Or even a sister for his, because he's a, he's a young brother. So either or doesn't make a difference. Get, see, his sister Angela would take him back on this time track. She, uh, sister Angela, she straight wires him. She straight wires him. Yeah. Has so anyone has anyone has anyone audited him yet? No, he just had uh, straight wiring. He was with a brother from New York. Brother Yassin, his name's Yassin also. I know, I know Brother Yassin. Brother Yassin is a scientist, but I can't find him anymore. He's um he works so much. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, other brothers, they're not utilizing the tool, practicing the tool. So <laughs> I like how you said that. <laughs> yeah, but he brother straight wire is good. But straight wire is not going to get to the root of or remove the real causes. And I think a lot of this that we already spoke about. Yes, sir. That has okay. to be addressed. Yes, sir. Okay. Praise and, and just the answer is all you yeah, there's, there's, there's no, there's no, there's nothing that says, I don't believe my, in my own, my own humble opinion, there's nothing that says that Sister Angela couldn't actually take him into reverie. Right. She, and Sister Angela, she knows her stuff. She's excellent. Yes, sir. Praise you to Allah. Okay, I'll reach out to her. She right downstairs anyway, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> right downstairs. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, family. Lots of things to bless you. Assalamualaikum. Happy Savings well, Day, everyone. Happy Savings Day. Happy Savings Day.